Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining the Coffee Talk today to hear about our Round River Semesters projects. My name is Ren Garrison, and I'll be discussing my preliminary study of the first two and a half years worth of data from Sky Island Alliance's Photofauna project, in which I broadly analyzed the trends shown by the animals captured in photographs from camera traps set up, observed, and maintained by SIA staff, community volunteers, and ecologists local to the Sky Island region in Southern Arizona and Northern Sonora. This first slide shows a couple camera trap photos of a bobcat, some white-tailed coos deer, a black bear, and a couple Cooper's hawks. For some background, the Madrean Archipelago is the most biodiverse region in the United States and was classified by the nonprofit Conservation International as one of 34 biodiversity hotspots worldwide. On this map, the Madrean Archipelago is section 14 at the bottom, and you can see how small of a region it is to be renowned for biodiversity worldwide. This project is important because all over the world, the expansion of urban areas is disconnecting the full ranges of animal species and destroying their native habitats. With the shrinking of their natural range and habitat, native species are forced to return to the urban areas they were displaced from in order to survive. This project was designed to observe and analyze the patterns of wildlife in urban areas so that conservationists can prioritize the protection of threatened and endemic species that are sensitive to urban expansion and such a valuable regional ecosystem. As a bonus, it's a wonderful way to reconnect the community with the wildlife in their own backyards. This study draws its results from the 41 camera sites that had data for more than three total months out of 54 total camera sites. The data was collected from August of 2018 to March of 2021. Because of the goal of this study is to observe patterns of urban adapted species and note the species that are more sensitive to human development, I wanted to classify each camera site as urban or rural based on the number of road roads nearby. Using QGIS software, I created a map of the site coordinates and road systems, then ranked the sites by the total kilometers of roads within a five kilometer buffer of their exact coordinates. As you can see on this histogram, there was a natural break at 150 kilometers of roads within five kilometers of the site. So we ranked the 25 camera sites with less than 150 kilometers of roads nearby as rural to the left of the graph and the other 16 sites to the right as urban. As you can see on the map, all of the urban sites actually were within Tucson city limits. This box and whisker plot displays the proportionate spread of sightings between rural and urban sites of all species present in the data submitted so far. The green bars represent the percentage of months each species was present out of total months of data collected in rural sites, and the purple bars represent the percentage of months each species was present in urban areas. The species are shown on the graph from left to right, from the most urban adapted to the most sensitive, demonstrating the gradient of presence found in different species. If a species was caught on camera as often in urban sites as in rural, I classified them as urban adapted. If not, they were considered sensitive. The cutoff there is at between Gila monster and antelope jackrabbit right in the center of the graph. These two graphs show some more specific examples just zoomed in from the last graph. The left graph displays data for the cottontail, bobcat, and coyote, which were the most common species found in urban areas. The right graph displays some of the species that seem to avoid urban areas the most, like the hooded skunk, gray fox, and white-nosed coati. As you can see, the white-nosed coati was not once found in urban sites. This is a table of all 31 species seen in the data used for this study, sorted into classifications of urban adapted and sensitive based on their proportion of presence in urban and rural areas. One species that surprised me was the Gila monster, which was rarely but only found in urban areas. In addition to the classification of camera sites and species, SIA hopes to be able to answer some important ecological questions with their photofauna data. I will go through my analyses of four of their research priorities, which address the statistics of several focal species for each question. First off is the success of species that SIA hypothesized would be urban adapted. Three of these focal species will have a chart like this one that show the percent presence of each species of interest in both urban and rural sites. Each number demonstrates the percentage of months that each species was seen out of all months of data collected at urban or rural sites. Within the focal species for the success of urban adapted, the bobcat and cottontails were present two times more, present, more frequently in urban sites than in rural. However, the striped skunk 
SIA's fifth focal species for the success of potentially urban adapted species was more present in rural sites than urban sites by 2.5%, making this study label it a sensitive species. Next, I'll address the persistence of several species unique to the Sky Island region. Of the three focal species for their persistence as species unique to the Sky Island region, Gould's turkey was the most often spotted, but in only 1.2% of total months and never at urban sites. The antelope, jackrabbit, and Gila monster were both spotted in 0.2% of total months, but while the Gila monster was spotted in only urban sites, the antelope jackrabbit was equally captured on camera in urban and rural sites. Another ecological question SIA had for their photo photofauna data is the northern range limits of subtropical species. This is a relevant question about the Madran archipelago because it is the meeting point of two different climate zones, subtropical coming up from the south and temperate coming down from the north. This map shows the sites that each of the five subtropical species of interest for their northern range limits and lines that present their northernmost latitude. The two northernmost species at the same point were white-nosed coati and the javelina, then the hooded skunk less than 10 kilometers south. Greater than 25 kilometers south of the hooded skunk's northernmost appearance was the hognose skunk. Then the Mexican, North Mexican Virginia opossum was the southernmost, appearing at a rural site even with the latitude of the southern edge of Tucson. Since the coati and javelina were seen at the second northernmost camera point, they could possibly be in more northern areas. The only way to find out through this photofauna project is to get more camera traps north of Tucson and collect even more data. The last of SIA's focal points addressed by my study is the presence of species they hypothesized were sensitive to urban development. Of the species that are presumed to need undeveloped space to thrive, the ringtail and western spotted skunk confirmed that assumption and were both labeled sensitive species by my study. The ringtail made a few appearances at urban sites, totaling 1.6% of months recorded, but the western spotted skunk never appeared in urban sites at all. The American badger, however, was considered urban adapted by the trends in this study, appearing in urban camera traps slightly more often than in rural camera traps. Despite the appearance of some fun trends and observations, so far this study has limited data sets and I recommend reanalyzing this data after at least one more year of community camera trap data collection to allow for more accuracy. After hearing my preliminary analysis of the Sky Island Alliance's photofauna data, I hope some of you were motivated to start collecting backyard photos to contribute to the next year's worth of data. Go to SIA's website and check out how to get involved with the photofauna project. Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs>